Coming up on the Santana Moss Show podcast. Hail to Rome. Discount Double Check said he's in this week, but the Packers are unsure. Sam Darnold may be a rookie, but he didn't look like it against the Lions. Well, um, we do all the blocking, and um, I don't understand. He makes seven times more than me. And Le'Veon's sitting there like, Boy, I slap you. You talking about my money? Why Le'Veon should be worried or not? Kirk Cousins slapped the hell out the Niners defense. And story time with myself. I got a close one to my heart. Stay tuned. And as usual, we're talking taking L's, but this time it wasn't us. And right now is the Santana Moss Show podcast. Ooh, 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 ooh. Santana Moss Show. Now I'm ready to go. Are we ready? Santana, Tana, 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 uh, uh, uh. Santana Moss Show Podcast. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss. My brethren, my fling. How you doing, homie? What's up, buddy? Hey, man, I want to give a shout out to our boy Oscar Santana for oh, this that's right what I'm here. Talking about. Huh? Like a little bobblehead. Uh, Shake your head. Uh, kind of look head. like me in the face, don't it? Looking like a little coat. <laughs> Just more imposing. Yeah, no doubt. You right, you right. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm Gucci, as the, as the young folks say. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Well, you know, I'm Gucci after that Redskin win. Oh. Wowzers. Oh, my God. Oh my. Offense, defense, special teams, Whole coaching. Lot of Whole lot of everything. On the road in the desert. I mean, what are your takeaways from that win? My takeaways was just, um, Tana, you know, as watching the game, you know, I was in studio um, at NBC with the fellas getting ready, you know, prepping for our show. Uh, Redskins overtime, and I'm sitting there, and after every play, it's like I had to come into the game with a different mindset right. this year. You know, I, I remember last year being so invested, heavily invested into the game, and basically leaving leaving from work almost to the point to where I was frustrated, as if I played the game, as if I was, as if the game meant something to me more than just being a alumni or a fan, and saying that okay, I have to go in and watch film like I was still playing. Watching the game the other day, I came into it with a different perspective. Say, hey, watch it. Whatever happens, happens. You know, take your notes, talk about it, and let it be done. But after every series, man, I was just sitting there like in awe. Like, man, this is this is great. Especially watching them in the third preseason game. I had no faith in what I was going to see. Didn't know what I was going to see this first first regular season game. So to see that output in the first half, to see the way the offense flow, they had a nice flow to them with, with the – um, they call it thunder and lightning. I call it flash and dash with, you know, CT and AP. Uh, and then just to see Alex do his thing. I mean, Alex was as advertised. I believe that when when coming into uh, the whole trade thing, the first thing that everybody talked about is Alex being able to protect the ball, make, you know, the right decision when it's time to pass the ball. I think he did all that. And just to see those guys come out with a victory, a dominant performance like both sides showed and on a special teams in, it was great to see. You know who else stood out to me, man? Jordan Reed. No doubt. Look, I mean, this is a guy, and we've been saying it at nauseum on this show and every other show we're both on. When he's healthy, he's one of the best in the game at that position. Yeah. And to me, he looked fresh. He looked like he had a chip on his shoulder. Um, and as long as he can stay healthy, and let's knock on wood, it's, it's all season, right? Yeah. But if the guy can just, gee damn, stay healthy, Tana. This offense to me moves, and what do you call them? Flash and dash. Flash and dash. I, I flash love. And dash. I love what I, I had a feeling, and we both did. AP was going to run like this against the Cardinals because yeah. they gave up on him, yeah. and I just thought he was going to come in with something to prove. I didn't think Thompson was going to be all the way back yet, yeah. but I think AP running the way he does allows Thompson to be more in that role that he is. To me, he's a complimentary back. I was impressed with Thompson because of. Just knowing the importance of practice, just knowing the importance of having that game experience. I reg- I care less who you are as a player, you know, uh, veteran or non-veteran. If you don't have that game experience, it's hard to come out there week one and say, I'm going to hit this thing running like everyone else. Right. To see this guy hit it running, you know what I mean? That's just a testament to what he did in the offseason. Yeah. Testament to what he his true beliefs were. I remember talking to this guy in the offseason when everyone was home, 
enjoying their vacation. Me and him was out there, you know, we had a, uh, we was talking Super Bowl talk uh, on NBC4. And I asked him, I said, so are you around? Are you in the area? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm here, Tanner. I'm here for the long haul, man. I'm not going nowhere. I got to make sure I'm ready, you know, come, you know, come um, time for training camp and everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember going home that night thinking about some of the things I sacrificed when I used to have my little setbacks in here and there. And I'm like, you know, here's a guy that's that's motivated, that know that last year he was at the top of his game and he had a letdown by having an injury. It wasn't his fault, but he had an injury. And, and sometimes people uh, were, you know, dictate your future on your injuries. Right. Is he injury prone? Is he a guy you can trust in? And Jay Gruden said, hey, that's our guy. Beyond all the on the rhythm backs they yeah. talked about when it comes to Kelly, you know, uh, P. Ryan, bringing in Geis. We knew when they brought in Geis, he was going to be the man, and C.T. still had his job. Sure. Geis went down, and then they had to bring in A.P. So just to see them bringing another complimentary back and to see C.T. still hit the ground running like it was last year all over again, like he didn't miss a beat. Right. Man, t my hats go off to the guy, man. And I know he's a good kid. He's a guy that I've always rooted for. Day one, I told him he reminded me of work done. I say, man, for you to be coming out of Florida State, growing up I was a Florida State fan. People won't even know that. I was a Florida State fan growing up in Florida, somehow snuck into Miami, and, you know, I never looked at Garden and Gold the same again. But I always watched those guys from afar, and CT reminded me of a work done type back. And to see him now flourish and be that guy for the Redskins, man, my, my hats go off to him, and I'm just hoping that he can keep it going. It's a great comparison. No Smaller doubt. guy, explosive, shifty, can do a bunch of different things, can catch it out of the backfield, can run between the tackles, can return punts and kicks. Uh, that's a great comparison there. I want to ask you this. You know, Colts come to town this weekend, Redskins home opener. Neither one of us are weather guys. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's just assume the game is played Sunday at the time at, at 1 p.m. It's going to be sloppy. We know mm -hmm. that. Uh, a heavy dose of AP and Chris Thompson, right? Heavy dose of AP, Chris Thompson. I mean, it's all, it's all about the scheme of things. I think, you know, schematically you have to understand who you plan, what – their weaknesses are, and who you're going to feature. Right. Uh, I believe. Does the weather factor? The weather is always a factor. So okay. when you have a back like AP right. and CT, you can say, hey, we can rest assured that whether it's going to be a, a, a dry day or a wet day, right. we got these guys. We can run the ball regardless. We can run the ball. Okay. That's one of the things, that's one of the luxuries we had throughout my years. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, we had Clinton Portis. And I say the fortunate part was, you can always build your offense around Clinton Porters. We didn't have to say, Tanner and Cooley, you're going to have to run the show. But when in doubt, if things couldn't get started or things didn't get started, we had those guys. We had me, we had Cooley. And I remember coming into games, like I talk about now, I wish I was a part of this new era of receiving receivers when they go out there and getting 10-plus attempts a game. I, I wish. <laughs> I used to ask for one attempt a series. Wow. Is that is that – you know, too hard. That's and unheard of. To now. me, it was like I couldn't get that. Right. Every series, it was someone new, someone different, or we ran so much to the point to where you know we dinked and dunked here and there, and I wasn't a part of it. So, uh, we talked about Julio on the opener. He yeah. had 19 targets. Exactly. So that's that's the new <laughs> era of receiving. Now this game is heavenly. You know, it's, it's all about the passing game. Right. It's all about the pass. The run game is even the passing game because you can throw a screen here and there to the running backs, and it's like a run. You know, so. Just knowing that we have an AP, man, and we can rest assured that if it's a good day with the weather or a bad day, just get that guy the ball. Other news and notes in the NFL. So the Packers survive. Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, leaves mm. the game, got carded off. What a sight for fantasy football fans and Packer fans out there. So the guy gets carted off. They're getting their ass beat at halftime by the Bears. He comes back out second half, comes back, they win. But now we're hearing some sketchiness surrounding the knee of Rodgers. Do you think he will play – Week two against the Vikings in Lambeau. Do you think this injury will linger? Do you think there's more than meets the eye? What's going on in Green Bay? My first question is, what's the injury? MCL. Right. It, it cl clearly is not an ACL. Meniscus. Something minor enough to give him a chance to play. So, watching the game, I would say MCL. Do I think he will play? Don't know. Do I think he should play? He's on my fantasy. <laughs> No, listen to this. I have him as a fantasy quarterback. 
He's number one. He's starting for me. He basically makes the Leesburg Pikers. Right. You know, we talked about yeah. Leesburg Pikers yeah, last I saw week. Him. I saw And those guys are on top of the list this okay. week. Talk about my Leesburg yeah. Pikers. They look great. And we talked about the name, and we, yeah. we threw shade at the name. But Leesburg Pikers on top of the list. I'll say Out this. Of all our guys in fantasy, we yeah. was number one in week one. So, okay. Well, but, I'll say this, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Tana had the high score in the stupid league we're in, <laughs> and I had the lowest. All right? Yeah. But to Go get on. back to Aaron Rodgers, um, if I'm a part of that organization, I sit him. I right. sit him this week because, one, the team he's facing, Purple People Eaters, Woo! these guys are the guys that knocked him out last year. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And just for the long haul of, of thinking where your team can be with this guy. I mean, you saw what he did in the second half, man. Yep. On one leg. This guy went out there and darted those things. And gave and led those guys to a victory. Mm-hmm. I sit them. I sit them against Minnesota because Minnesota is bringing everything: the kitchen sink, their mama, granddaddy, uncles, cousins. They bringing it at him. Mm-hmm. And he's in your division. You know that if I can shut this guy down, we shot. pretty much have a shot to win this thing. So I sit him this week if he's not clearly almost 100. percent And I don't think he's going to be 100. percent I think he willed his way to a victory the other night. Um, hats off to him. That shows you the type of player he is. You know, people. Questioning him, uh, why would you want to play? I want to play because I don't want no other guy to get comfortable in my seat. You know, we talked about this earlier. Me and Oscar and Rob had, you know, going over, you know, prep for this show, and I and I, you know, gave them examples of my years of was out there with one leg because my hamstring was raw. I had them pull that thing to the point to where it was so raw that, hey man, I'm out here, coach. You know, at the end of the day, you have you have no worries because I'm out here. And I remember talking to Gary Clock, and they talked about how. Gary Clock played every game with a torn hamstring. Mm. He put on something that they put on horses. Back then you can do that, uh, DMSO or something like that. I, I know I said it wrong, but he put on something, he told me, that that they put on horses, and he went out there and played. And so Gary always shared with me stories about how much I reminded him of himself, you know what I mean? And I say, Gary, it's crazy because I remember those first years with the Jets, you know, having torn, you know, uh, tear my meniscus and – Year after year, I had to deal with a, a, a tear here and there in my quad or my groin or my hamstring. It, it got me to the point to where I didn't want to let no one else down. Right. I understood who I let down and why I let them down. Hey, it's not my fault. I can't deal with these injuries. I don't know how to stop them. But guess what? You can rest assured I'm going to be out here whether I am have something messed up or not. So that's Aaron Rodgers. That's why they paid him the big bucks because they know not only that he's, he's an elite quarterback, he's the best quarterback be- behind – Tom Brady, and only because Tom Brady has the Super Bowls, I think he's number one. You know what I mean? Hey, we can argue this. Tom Brady is number one, but if you had to put all the Super Bowls to the side, who, who's number one of you? I think Aaron Rodgers. Wow. So not only will I give him that praise, I think he gets the nod or gets the praise from his staff and from his guys around him because of moments like this when he knows he's down and out. Hey, I'm going to go out there and win this game for you. The legend continues to grow for Aaron Rodgers. Now, one guy trying to build a legend is Sam Darnold, the rookie. Impressive debut against the Lions in Detroit. First play in his pro career in the regular season was a pick six going the other way. Kid settles, throws two touchdowns, looks good. Uh, and the Jets win in dominating fashion. Your thoughts of the rookie QBs? Only one starting right now in that class. Only, only, only rookie quarterback starting in the NFL this season. Um, what better way to start your your, your career? Off? Right. What better way? Because one of the things that I talked about, and and I watched I watched this game because I, I want to see him. I, I've been high on him, and I'm I want to really see if I should bring him into my fantasy league and, and have him as my second quarterback. And when I saw that pick six. I had nothing else to say, but you know what? All those jitters, all the ups and the downs that he was going to probably experience, he got it all. He got it all out the way in one play. Sure did. Monday night football. Monday night football. football first start. First start yeah, on the road. On the, people questioning why we started him now. Right. Throw a pick six. Yep. And guess what? Now let's see you grow. Let's see who you are. Let's see who you're made of. Yep. What are you made of? And I think he showed that. I think. He responded well, and just to see the team around him. I mean, not only did he respond well to defense, where well, they had five picks, uh, uh, you know, and a couple of scores on defense. I mean, 
just to see that kid go out and play, it made you say, that's why they got him up week one. That's why he's he got the nod to be the starter in week one. And I'm just really intrigued to see what can be next for this guy because, I mean, just looking at them as a total, their team went out there and played well. You know, we talk so much about Detroit's defense. I just shared with you, I say, the one thing that people have to, uh, people fail to realize, that New England Patriots defense was good. Yeah, they was good. They was good year in and year out. But the one thing they always had, to, to back them, even when they wasn't always so good, they had Tom Brady. Right. They had Tom Brady to slice and dice you up. So, you know, let alone that these guys played okay because they was well prepared. You know, I think one of the things that people fail to, fail to mention about the uh, New England Patriots defense and the uh, Detroit defense that was probably going to be similar to what we saw in the Patriots because of the head coach and things, it's the preparation part. Yeah, they could be prepared. But they don't have a Tom Brady over there in Detroit, you know? And that's one of the things that I take the credit. I, I watched that game, and, and I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, see, this is what they're missing. They're missing that quarterback that's going to go out here and go score for score with you. That guy that's going to hold these drives hold and run that clock long enough to where the defense got to make a play. Just one play. Just make one play for us, and we'll be okay. And that's what they don't have. So I was, I was you know, that game was circled on my sheet because I really wanted to see this defense because everyone talked about it. And then the guy who I was up against in fantasy, he picked Detroit. So I'm like, oh, okay, this could be, you know, I had Jaguars, he had Detroit. Right. I really wanted to see the outcome of our defenses just to see who got the nod. And my defense got the nod because I knew the pass rush alone was going to be second to none. But I really wanted to see what Detroit brought in defense knowing that they didn't have a Tom Brady. And not to throw shade at their quarterback, I do think they have a – a great quarterback. He's just not Tom Brady. Well, he didn't look great on Monday Night th- Football throwing five picks, for God's sakes. Okay, so the Steelers and Browns tie. So even when the Browns win, they don't win. You know what I'm saying? Oh they didn't God. lose, but they didn't win either. It's a tie. Stop the bleeding, bro. But forget about that awful game. I was just cussing at the TV. I don't like either team. I mean, that game was awful. Le'Veon Bell, okay, doesn't play in that game. James Conner goes out, rushes for two touchdowns. I mean, what do you think about Le'Veon? I mean, what what do you think he's thinking right now? <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, you hear about the emojis that he he was posting on Twitter. He was and, throwing and shade. He was throwing a little shade. But honestly, think about it. Conner. Conner had a, a, a stellar performance. Yeah. And besides Conner's performance, before that even took place, the offensive line threw so much shade on Le'Veon. Right. Do it as, in his pocket, Tanner. Be, being Le'Veon, do I want to come back to that crap? I mean, I understand what I've done and uh, and and who I mean and what I mean to this organization, but do I want to come back to where all this time I've been out here busting my behind, and you guys have been checking my pocketbook. Mm. I say pocketbook because that's just a little thing you say every now and then. But you've been checking my pockets. You worrying about my dollars. Right. You worrying about – as a player, that's – that's that's you disrespecting me as a man right. to even be worrying about the dollar I'm making. That's fighting words. You know, I don't even care. I care. I mean, you could be making all the money in the world. Hey, hats off to you. I, you know, you, you earned deserve it. it. Yeah. You, you deserve it. And that's where Le'Veon is at. He's at a point in his career where – I don't even think it's about the dollar. It's about the longevity of he's trying to be committed to a team for longer than just a year. So much can happen in a year, man. You don't understand this game. You can be gone in a play. I was going my freshman, my rookie, I say freshman all the time, my rookie season, before I even played a preseason game, I was they was in doubt I would make it even to four years in this league, and I'd end up doing 14. Messed my knee up just like that in a fan appreciation night. So you can be going instantly. And you see time and time again these guys going down the preseason, these guys going down in week one. You saw the guy from New England went down after someone, uh, the quarterback threw a pick, and he was just trying to make a tackle, and he blew his knee. You know what I mean? So Le'Veon is just trying to have, you know, baby, give me what I'm due. Right. I understand that I'm getting top dollar for my position in one year. But, no, I need two, three, four years that I know I can sit down and rest assured that – I have a team that's backing me. Especially that guy who's you know, earned. I yeah. mean, he's shown he's worth the money. So to see the guys go out to his pocket, to see the offensive linemen talk about, oh, we the guys that, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I talk like, I'm talking the voice that I think all offensive <laughs> linemen talk in. Well, we the one blocking for you, and, we, and you make seven times more than me. You have any donuts? 
Look, when I hear a guy talking like that, I, I come up on him, I walk up on him, and I'm going to turn my head and slap you in your <laughs> face. You out here talking about my pockets and talking about what you're doing for me, brother. It's a team. Last time I checked, it was a team effort, man. It's you come with the backhand? Back. Hold on. Let me think about it. <laughs> Catch him off guard. Slap you in your <laughs> No, nah, be, to be honest, it's for real though, man. That's one of the most, <laughs> them big jokes you check, man. Look here, uh. man. You out here worrying about my pockets, man. You out here worrying about what you block. You supposed to be blocking for me like right. that. You, you, we make each other That's better. That's how you get your money. We make each other Jeez. better. All 11 of us make each other better. True. You know, and, and I just feel bad for Le'Veon because I feel like he deserves a, a check. He Can you give me that one check. more time? Think about it. I want to say something else. Wow, slap me in I like the follow through on I the couldn't back even, I couldn't even follow through like I want to the mic in my way. Wow, slap you so hard, but your mama feel it. You hear me? <laughs> hey, man. Kirk Cousins with the Vikings. <laughs> they win their season opener in his debut. 24-16 oh, against man. the Niners. Your thoughts on Kirk's performance? I mean, Kirk, 20 20 for 36, 244 yards, two tugs, two yeah, tugs. Yeah, man. His, he was his, very efficient. His 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 guys, Thielen uh, went for uh, 100 yards. And but Diggs, Diggs went for 43, three yep. catches in a tug. Yep. I mean, look, besides what Kirk – to me, Kirk looked like Kirk. Yeah. Kirk went out there and orchestrated the offense the way he know how to. Uh, I think that touchdown pass to Diggs showed what he can do. You know what I mean? Dropped a dime. I, to me, that's like a better pass because I've seen Kurt make those passes a couple of times. As a Redskin, they was out of bounds here and there. But he dropped a dime to Diggs in that end zone. Tight coverage. Uh, but just to see him go out there and orchestrate that offense the way he has as a Redskin, it was good to see. But the one thing that stands out to me that Kurt didn't have when he, had, when he played for the Redskins, his defense had three sacks and three INTs. Wow. That right there is a recipe for uh, 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 a great performance by any quarterback. As L- long as you have potential. Right. If you have potential to be one of the best, better quarter- top 10 quarterbacks, top 15, if you have that potential and your defense going out there making those kind of plays, sacking the guy t- at least three times and coming up with three turnovers, all you have to do is put up the points. For sure. And I think that what Kurtz has on his side now, I think it's going to be pressure because the defense is going to bring it every week. And the pressure is going to be, can you score? Can you put up the points? Can you be efficient in the red zone? Can you do some of the things that we question, you know, about you as a red skin? And I think, you know, so far in week one, he stood up to all those challenges and to those tests. Yeah, I, I think the test is yet to come for him. I, I think they will be in big games. They will be in playoff moments. And there are going to be moments where they're going to need Cousins to come through on the big stage. We haven't seen that from him yet. Now, he hasn't been on the biggest of stages yet, but he will be there. Ten, I want to ask you this. You know, this week marks the 17th anniversary mm. of um, 9-11. You were a rookie with the Jets in New York at that time. I cannot imagine. Uh, I just wanted you to speak on that and that experience for you. Whew. You know, coming over here, um, I came over and I was like, you know, I was, I, was, I, I was in deep thought. I was in deep thought going over this whole show and I'm sitting there when I saw the 9-11 thing I that's the only thing I didn't circle because I knew he was going to talk about it and I remember that day vividly I mean it was it was a day like no other first of all my first year in New York the experiences I went through man it was like no other like I to be here today to talk about some of the things I experienced in New York you know I experienced that power outage where we lost power for so long that it was the first or second time it was the second time ever in history that New York lost power for that long um messing my knee up not even playing until probably week 12 of that season of my rookie season and at the time you know um I was heading over it was an off day it was a Tuesday it was an off day and I'm heading over to the facility to get my treatment and I remember I'm dashing through the Metal or uh, uh, Brook Parkway, coming from Long Beach, New York, going to Hempstead, going to Hofstra University because you know we had our facility there. And I'm dipping and dodging through traffic, beating out to some Tupac. I remember beating out to some Tupac, and I'm wondering, I'm like, why all this traffic? Why these cars are stopping on the side of the road and looking across the water, like almost into Manhattan? You can actually see Mat- Manhattan from where we was at in Long Beach, and it was far, but you can see. And I, I see all these people outside their cars and they're looking and I'm looking at my time like I'm almost late for treatment. So let me get myself the treatment. I get there on Hoffman University. I walk into the Jets facility. 
immediately I walk in and everybody's in and all looking up at the TV. And I remember guys like, like you could see the, the expressions on their face. And I'm like, man, what's going on? Like I come in there cheering, you know, with a with a you know a, a better you know attitude because you know yeah I, I'm I'm overwhelmed with you know what's going on the season has started and I'm just looking forward to me just getting healthy and I'm coming in with a good spirits and I'm just seeing guys like Tanner you saw this and as I watch as I'm looking at the TV screen the second plane is hitting the twin towers and I'm like what the f-? and that was immediately the first thing came on my mind like what's going on and. Folks was like, hey, man, your family in town, are they on any planes coming, leaving out? And I'm sitting there like, well, no, nah, they were supposed to leave this morning. They didn't leave, you know. And and so treatment was done. Like we was, you know, the training staff was like, man, fellas, get your ice, stem, and get out of here, man. Take care of your families. It's going to be crazy. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, nah, this is, this is a dream. Like I'm almost, I sat down. I remember sitting down, and I remember like, damn, should I go back home now and check on everybody? So I immediately called my mom. And I remember my mom them was up. They was already, they had made it home. And I'm like, man, y'all left out this morning before all this crap just went on. And I'm on my way back to Long Beach. And I remember they sent a evacuating Manhattan, you know, just before I left out of there and, and, and watched the last news clip, they, they evacuated Manhattan, be careful in the streets. You know, they not sure what's next. I'm terrified. I'm man. Let me get home. You know, uh, let me get home to my family. And I remember entering, coming off the expressway, and entering Long Beach. And one of the trains must be let out everybody from Manhattan into Long Beach. They brought them weed out as far as they could get them away. And it was like a war zone. People was in the streets everywhere, running. You saw people with dust on them because they just came from Matt. I mean, they crying trying to find, scrambling, trying to find, you know, you know, um, you know, somewhere just, just, just to go. You know, they lost because some of them just far away from home. And I remember sitting at the light and someone opened my door, my car door. And this young lady must be, she, I guess she was contacting her boyfriend at the time and he had the same color truck as mine. And he, she jumped in my car and I'm like, what? And I, you know, and before I can even, you know, say anything till I could just see her face, see the tears. And I'm like, where you need to go? You know, and I'm like, my house is like right across the street where you need to go. And I put all that stuff to the side, man. And I just my heart was, bump, you know, pounding. And I'm just thinking about all these people out here that's just scrambling and not knowing who was left in those buildings, who they just lost. You know, all that stuff came afterwards. But, you know, fortunately, she didn't stay too far. Her mom or someone didn't stay too far, took her around the street, dropped off. We barely said any two words to each other. Uh, she cried most of the time, and she showed me. She pointed to where she needed to go. I dropped off, and I'm, you know, she was thank you, and tucked her head and walked into the home. And I remember my mom and her dad being outside, and I drove off like, man, I'm I'm experiencing something like no other here right now. All this is going on in my first year away from home, my first real year, you know, being outside of Miami. I'm up here in New York, and this is this is this is life, and. I just remember those weeks afterwards, man, and and all the decisions that was made by the NFL about should we play next week. And, you know, I remember the Jets was one of the teams that took a stand. Like, no, you know, it's a lot going on. We need to mourn for these people that lost their loved ones, all the uh, firefighters that was on call, that, you know, the first responders, the policemen, you know, you name it. All these guys that went there and then when the stuff came down while they going there trying to help people get out of those buildings – it was like no other, man. So just experience it. Every year, even as a player, when 9-11, if, if we had a game that weekend, it was something about that day for me. It was something about that day just brought back memories, brought back, you know, uh, the feeling that I had as a young man, 22 years old, saying to myself, like, man, this is this is something that, you know, I will never forget, you know. And then just hearing the other stuff that went on, you know, not in New York, here in D.C. and everywhere else, I really felt like one of those countries that I hear about and I see on TV when they're in war and they running for their lives. You know, I'm in New York now and I'm experiencing this. I'm in the country that we said the land of the free, and we're sitting here saying we had a terrorist attack. So I was in, I was in awe, man, about the whole day and just the— be every day, every year reminded when 9-11 hits, every year I'm reminded of those experiences and those people that I saw that a lot of those folks that um that we don't talk about now that that lives changed drastically because of 
people they lost their loved ones they lost their experiences that they experienced because that was their workplace um i never forget it man i appreciate that story it uh definitely gave me goosebumps that was my first time hearing that about your time in new york and i think all of us you know on the anniversary of 9 11 it evokes the emotion that we all felt you know the combination of, of sadness and anger as well i remember feeling that and on this day and this week, uh, now and forever, for the rest yeah. of our lives, for sure, we'll always think of the families affected by that tragedy. All right, Tana, let's lighten the mood a little bit with some taken L's. This week, we decided not to do our own L's. We both won this week yeah. for once, right? Yeah. So we decided let's pick on some other people. Who you got? Well, you know me. I'm a um, green and orange through and through. And... Do you? I'm watching a little college football this week, <laughs> and it's funny because I, I didn't pitch to too many games, especially <laughs> those games down south. But right. watching highlights here and there, and beyond the highlight part of it, I'm, I'm looking at social media, and my boy T Double D down in, one time for Trick Daddy Dollars. Trick Daddy Dollars. <laughs> if anyone gonna mock these guys, Trick did it. And Florida State, I guess everyone now has jo- joined the bandwagon of my fellow Canes and getting these turnover chains where there's a turnover chain, Alabama does a turnover belt. I seen a cane, you, turnover you have cane. Guys have a cane. You have teams that has an axe that has right. a, you know, you name it. Yep. I think Miami is is number one right now for what they have. They have a turnover chain. Big Cuban League, big chunky dookie <laughs> Cuban League, how we say it in Miami. It's a big girl too. It's like eight pounds, Man, eight seven thing, pounds, eight ounces. Kilos, baby, kilos, big kilo. You know, if you're in the kilo game, when it comes to those Cuban links, baby, you you moving weight. <laughs> big girls need love too. But not to be honest with you, Florida State has a turnover book bag. What? I mean, look here. <laughs> if that ain't taking the L, I don't know what it is. Tricks, trick describes as a pocketbook. <laughs> We're not the only school in the state of Florida. Here's Florida State with the turnover pocketbook. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the turnover pocketbook. You can change the scraps. You can wear it on your back. You can wear it under your arms. The turnover pocketbook. You got a turnover book. Look, I don't even know what to do with that. If, if I was a, a guy from Florida State making a play, this got a turnover interception from a return, you name it, and you put a book. Hold on. How am I going to put this book bag on all these shoulder pads? I don't. I, I can't describe it, man. That's an L. Florida State, come on, man. Get get better. Do better. Be Got better. To be more careful. You know, nobody from Florida State is making plays right now, anyway. So it doesn't matter. No I mean, what are you putting in that bag? Yeah. It ain't plays. It ain't turnovers. Uh, for me, it's John Gruden. Oh man. I mean, listen, man. Chucky. Yeah, Chucky. The Raiders look terrible. Mm. They did not look prepared to play the first half. They did. They looked prepared to play for a first half against the Rams. That second half, communication was awful. Derek Carr was awful. Gruden looked lost. And for once, he's the wrong Gruden, baby. How about Jay? 0-4 in season openers. Not anymore. Not anymore, baby. Give me that dub, baby. (laughs) Well, you know, Gruden took an L way before that first game of the season because losing Khalil Mack. And Camille Mack going out Woo! there and having a game that he had week one without having a preseason, Hello. without having the OTAs. So the Oakland Raiders took an L way before their week one, you know, opener on Monday night. So right. um, I, I look forward to a lot more L's being, you know, um, they probably going to be the topic of our discussion a lot when we're talking about taking L's. You're right about that. You know, speaking of which, we ain't taking no L's this show, baby. It was a Straight good one, baby. winners, man. Today was a good thing. Ah, Santana Mall Show podcast. That's a wrap. You know where to find us. Everywhere you get amazing podcasts, because that's what this is. Peace. It's the Santana Mall Show. Home of the Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week. It's a lyrical